Hello, this is Lady Just with the truth in politics. If a political party is confused in opposition, what would they be in office? If a political party has no message in opposition, then what vision can they implement? If by some bad twist of fate, they win. Clueless. And this is exactly what they were when they were in office. decided as a nation to adopt multi-party democracy in 1992, we knew there would be opposition parties, but we did not expect that the duty of opposition was to oppose everything just for the sake of opposing. They even opposed their own position. Can you imagine? And I looked up the definition of opposition political party. In politics, the opposition comprises one or more political parties or other organized groups that are opposed primarily ideologically to the government. Ideologically. So let us see what the NDC's ideology is. See, the National Democratic Congress is a social democratic political party in Ghana, presumably founded on the principles of poverty and accountability. Hmm. Their founding father and mother abandoned the party in the last decade when they believed that the new party leadership had abandoned poverty and accountability for create, loot and share. You see, since 2002, as an opposition party, the NDC called themselves social democrats. Yeah, right. Do you remember that colorful outdooring? Mm -hmm. Now let's see what it means to be a social democrat. You just look at this. Modern social democracy is characterized by a commitment to policies aimed at curbing inequality, oppression of underprivileged groups, and poverty, including support for universally accessible public services like care for the elderly, child care education, health care, and workers' compensation. And unlike the Obwasi Common in Virginia, when I say look it up yourself, you will find exactly what I'm telling you. I will not come on air and speak with authority on a rumor like it is the gospel truth. No way. That is not journalism, but reckless and irresponsible entertainment. Truth in politics, we stand for incontrovertible truth. So now let's take three things from the definition. Let's see child care. The NDC in eight years did not introduce one single policy to help children. Bakokura, not one. When the MPP and Akufo brought free maternal care and school feeding programs, the NDC destroyed it. Now let's see education and equality. To the NDC, keeping as many people as possible equally uneducated allows the party to educate the masses with lies and propaganda. But when the MPP promised free SHS and the NDC opposed it and said it would take 20 years to do it, <laughs> now you do the math. <laughs> in the last three academic years alone, 500,000 kids who would not have made it to secondary school education managed to join due to free SHS. If we had waited until 2038, using today's figures alone, boy, at least 3 million Ghanaian children would have been denied secondary education. The NDC, in short, is dangerous to your future, Ghana's future. Now look at health care. First, they, with anger and noise, said no to the National Health Insurance Scheme and walked out in Parliament, as usual. Yes, social democrats who are dangerous to your health. Can you imagine? And when President Kufo created it in 2004, it took the NDC to almost collapse it under the heap of areas. But the NDC, <laughs> they are very good at something, though. <laughs> Let's give it to them. They are really good at making the masses think that the NDC is the party that is like them. They talk the talk and walk away from the talk. It is called false populism. 
The MPP, on the other hand, is seen as the party for the business class, for the professionals, for the elites, etc. But when it comes to their work, the MPP is actually the party for the poor, the party for the people, and at the same time, the party for business. Let me name a few. Capitation Grant, MPP. NHIS, MPP. LEAP. Cash for the very poor, MPP. School feeding program, MPP. Free fertilizer for farmers, MPP. Cheaper electricity, MPP. One hot meal a day for all day students, MPP. Free SHS, MPP. You see, the NDC has no ideas to improve Ghana. They just exist to deceive Ghanaians to elect them into power. Their whole existence is about elections. But don't take my word for it, okay? Here are the words of Dr. Tony Edu, an NDC icon. We are supposed to be social democrats, for God's sake. And what do social democrats do? They consider policies and programs that inure to the benefit of the wider and larger majority of the populace rather than contribute to what is happening, elections being a ritual for the circulation of elites. I stopped attending NDC congresses as far back as 2000 because our congresses never extended to the discussion of policies and programs. It was only for elections. Elections of party officials and flag bearer. Who? And Razzle Matas ends and we go. We never had time to discuss policies and programs. Thanks, Dr. Tony Edu, for telling truth in politics. Today, you can actually add PDS to the long list of the good things that the MPP continues to do that the NDC by default opposes. <laughs> this makes my heart really boil. I mean, I'm talking about PDS. In this case, they even started it before they were booted out of office. Yes, if you don't know, I'm telling you on authority. And they were booted out of office because of expensive incompetence. To begin with, why was the NDC so willing to give 80% control of a critical national asset such as ECG to foreigners with Ghanaians retaining only 20%. Yep, they wanted to give 80, a whopping 80% of ECG to foreigners and only 20% to Ghanaians and for 25 good years. But as soon as the president, Nanado Dankwe Kufuadu, came into office, he said, no way, I won't let this happen. He has Ghana at heart, of course. Ghanaians will control a majority being 51%, or we will not do this Millennium Challenge thing. And the Americans agreed. So you ask yourself, why couldn't Mahama ask for majority control of ECG? Why? You see Mr. CNN Mahama willing to give away control of ECG and whooping 80% to foreigners and just 20 to Ghanaians. You see it. Now, you see Nanado insisting that Ghanaians control the majority at 51%. Now, remember that when the NDC made this arrangement and invited 60 companies to bid and shortlisted six of those companies, Nanado was not even president yet. Yes. That's the gospel truth. He wasn't president yet. So I will let those smarter than I am figure out how Nanado in opposition managed to control the bidding process and give ECG control to his friends and families at a time when Mahama was the president. <laughs> Where do you say a magic power? Anyway, these are the six entities that the NDC shortlisted for the privatization or shall I say, the giveaway arrangement. When the MPP insisted that Ghanaian companies control 51% instead of a paltry 20%, three of the six companies pulled out. Of the three that remained, a fourth also pulled out, leaving two. 
Of the remaining two, one was disqualified because it failed to declare a previous relationship with ECG that represented a conflict of interest. I think the Americans simply didn't want their cash to go to the Chinese company. Fellow Ghanaians, that's how Meralco of the Philippines ended up winning the bid. It had qualified and it was the only company left. Let me be clear here. The selection process that resulted in Meralco winning the bid began with the NDC and ended with the MPP. Therefore, any notion at all that the MPP selected Meralco is plain false. Now, before Meralco won the bid, it had its own Ghanaian partners it was working with. Meralco retained 30 of the 49% and gave 19 to Inergia of Angola to make up the foreign 49% control. Meralco partnered with Inergia of Angola and the Ghanaian businessmen who worked with them to win the bid. The MPP administration had no role in selecting the Ghanaian partners that Meralco ended up with to form what we know to be PDS. They had no role at all. In fact, Imani who is no friend of the current administration, stated this. The government was not constrained in scrutinizing the proposed equity participants prior to closing or the fundraising strategies of the proposed special purpose vehicle. For a civil society group that hardly passes up the chance to accuse the MPP of corruption, the statement is an unintended admission that the MPP had no role in selecting Meralco's local partners. Now, if the MPP had forced any company or Meralco to do business with, you don't think that Meralco would be complaining bitterly and blaming the government for the demise of PDS? Furthermore, how did a known NDC friend, Joseph a Japan of Jospon, manage to put two of his people on the PDS board? Project director Viraj Bhatt is an Indian who came into Ghana upon just one sponsorship. Remember Suba Info Solutions? The Indian in charge of the PDS operations was brought to Ghana by Jospon to manage two of his companies, which both failed. Suba and Kasapa Telecom. Yeah. The man who formed TG Energy Solutions, David Nanayawasari, everyone knows has been Joseph Ejapon's right-hand man for years. And the CEO of PDS, Reverend William Hutin Mensa, worked for Jospon after being sacked as MD of ECG back in 2014. Fred Asmini and his GTS Power were among the 60 companies that put in a bid for the concession in 2015, but joined Philip Ayensu and David Asari when he lost. He's known as an energy expert and not an MPP member. Kwabna Boatinedu of Santa Baron won a 300 million security equipment deal in November 2016 when John Mahama was president. So when you look at the main players in the PDS organization, you find a mix of businessmen who have survived and thrived under all government. So listen here, I'm spending all this time not to bore you, but to show you the people behind PDS to expose the initial lies by the NDC that the PDS belongs to Nane Okufuado's friends and family members. It's, it's a lie. It's, it, the, it's a big lie. Now, PDS was to present demand guarantee before the transfer of ECG assets and after to invest $580 million over five years. The concession that Mahama agreed to did not require any shareholder to invest a single peso before taking over the asset. The demand guarantee was a conditioned precedent, meaning it must be in place before concession could even start. So PDS approached Danwell Insurance. Danwell Insurance contacted Joe Australia Insurance Company, who in turn reached out to Al Kut Insurance of Qatar. Eventually, PDS produced a demand guarantee ensuring the concession and was allowed to take over the operation of ECG. Three months later, a responsible act of extra due diligence by ECG under the watchful eye of Kekeli Gajipo discovers that Alcus assets are worth only $170 million 
and thus cannot issue demand guarantee to the tune of $350 million. Upon contacting our court, it turned out that they never issued a demand guarantee. It also emerged that the product line is not even part of their portfolio and they cannot stand behind the fraudulent demand guarantee and any liabilities that may have arisen since March 2019. Look at it this way. You buy a truck truck to transport passengers. Now, when you do that, you need a commercial vehicle insurance. You present that insurance, and now you are allowed to carry passengers. But later, your insurance is found to be fraudulent or invalid. Should the police allow you to continue to carry passengers with your vehicle? Any responsible government would immediately suspend a company that submitted a fake demand guarantee, and that's exactly what the MPP did. Interestingly, as the NDC tries to insinuate that local companies belong to MPP officials and sympathizers, one would have expected that the NDC would jubilate over the suspension. Because you wanted it, you know, out, and it's been suspended. Well, that is what responsible opposition parties do, but not the NDC. Look at John Jinapo, who was the Deputy Minister of Energy under Mahama, now in opposition. On August 2019, he says we should terminate the PDS agreement. Then, due to turn of events I explained earlier, the MPP terminates the PDS agreement in October 2019. That same month, John Jinapo now says government could face a lawsuit for terminating the PDS deal. Okay, so what exactly does the NDC want? Anyway, the government had no choice but to terminate the concession agreement even over the threats of the Millennium Challenge Corporation. Even that, President Okufuadu made time out of his busy schedule to meet with Mr. Sean Karen Cross, the CEO of Millennium Challenge Corporation, and reached a gentleman's agreement with him that his government would find a reputable replacement through restrictive tender by the compact two deadline of December 31st, 2019. However, the MCC did not go beyond the handshake and rather decided to protect PDS and the deal, insisting that PDS be retained or Ghana would lose the remaining $190 million of the Millennium Challenge Fund. So Ghana became like the police officer who has just arrested a trotro driver without valid insurance with the United States being like the big man who wants the police officer to allow the trotro driver to proceed to work without insurance. Mm -hmm. What would you do if you were the police officer? Would you succumb to the big man or would you do your job? Well, Ghana under the MPP did his job and insisted that the right thing be done. This is remarkable. This is fantastic. But the lesson here is the confused NDC opposition. Now let's see the list of things about this whole PDS process that the NDC has opposed. First, they opposed the very six companies that they themselves shortlisted because the MPP upon assumption of office chose not to change them. Then, they opposed it when the MPP negotiated the agreement to give Ghanaians 51% controlling interest in the private company instead of the 20% they gave Ghanaians. When the MPP allowed Miralco to select its own Ghanaian partners without interference from the government, they opposed that position. But then they turned around to oppose the eventual Ghanaian partners claiming that they were MPP people behind them, despite the fact that the people behind the partnering Ghanaian companies are their own people. Can, like, seriously? Today, they are all over the place talking about how Ghana is losing $190 million because of the termination of the PDS concession. Please, oh, ask them. And I am asking you, when they were calling for the government to terminate the PDS deal on the grounds that it belonged to the president's friends and family members, were they not thinking about $190 million? The NDC has just shown with this PDS issue that they are more interested in opposing everything that the MPP does, just like they did with NHIS, school feeding program, free SHS, one district, one factory. I could go on and on and on. They care 
more about opposing than they care for the welfare of this country. These are the facts about PDS. People of Ghana, let's be wise. Don't let us be confused by the confused NDC. Don't be confused. Mama means well. My name is Lady Just, and this has been the truth in politics.